Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the new Define R4. Now this is of course the successor to the R3 and anyone who's been building a new system and they're looking for a silent case will undoubtedly have the R3 on their shortlist. So the R4 has a lot to live up to. Now from a visual aspect you'll see that the, uh, the design, uh, the overall design of it is actually very similar to the R3. Uh, you can see the styling and the features, you know, they're very similar. Uh, but what Fractal have actually done is they've, uh, they've made the chassis wider so we've got the ability there for bigger CPU coolers and then behind the motherboard tray we've got more space there uh, to store your redundant cables so cable management is of course going to be a lot easier and then inside we've got the hard disk drive cages which is split into two sections and then we can uh, remove that upper cage to uh, allow for longer graphics cards so you know the compatibility in there is going to be a lot better and Fractal have also implemented a fan controller on the front of the case so we can switch between three different modes for the cooling fans inside there so that's quite a nice feature to have. So with that brief overview of the case we're going to go dive in now for a good overview of, of the new R4. We're going to check out all the features and give a verdict at the end. Okay we'll start by taking a look at the front of the case. You can see here we've got a very minimalist elegant sort of design and this front panel acts as a door so it opens out like that on a pivot and this is indeed plastic but it does have the brushed aluminium appearance now opening this up we've got a magnet at the top and at the bottom and that just allows it to fit nice and snug to the case we've also got on the inside here insulation foam and this allows for noise damping Nice to see that Fractal have actually gone along the bezel and, and fitted it nice and carefully. Uh, some of the cases that we've seen that are silent cases, uh, they just get a piece of this foam and they just slap it on the inside like that. So, you know, it's nice to see that they've taken a bit more care with that. Now on the inside here, we've got two five and a quarter bay covers. And these are removable from the outside. You can see there, we've got a latch. We just need to pull and that allows us to take that out. These are plastic and ventilated. And on the inside though, we've also got a fan. And that allows us to switch between three different speeds for the fans. We've got 5 volts, 7 volts and 12 volts. And then further down we've got this ventilation panel which again is plastic. We just need to press two top slots in there and that drops down. And we've got another bracket inside here. Now this is the fan filter and it's also to attach the fans. You can see here Fractal have actually included a, a Silent Series R2 which is 140mm and uh, you can drop in 120 or 140mm fans into there and you don't even need to apply the screws so that's really nice and uh, of course you can take that out and clean it and it's really convenient. At the top of the case we have the front panel connectivity and this consists of the following. We've got the headphone and the microphone jack. We've got a reset button. A power button with LED beneath. That's going to emit a blue glow when, it, when it's powered up. Two USB 3 ports. Those are via the internal motherboard header. And then we've got two USB 2 ports. Further back from the front panel controls on the top there, we've got two placements for dual 120mm fans or 140 we don't have any included but we can drop those in and you just need to remove the panels on the inside. Moving on to the side panels, we've got on the alternate side a plain panel, no significant features. But on this prominent side here, we've got this mesh panel for attaching a 140 or a 120mm fan. Same with the top, you just need to remove the panel on the inside. It's also worth noting just while we've got the case on this uh, position, you can see the side there, the ventilation, and that is where the intake fans draw the air for the, uh, for the cooling. To remove these side panels, as always, it's just a case of removing the thumb screws. And then it just simply slides off. And you can see here that uh, this is a very sturdy panel. You can see it, just the noise of it when you, when you touch it and when you knock it. It's unlike anything that I've pretty much taken a look at on the silent series of cases. We've got this material here on the inside which is synthetic. It's not foam but it does allow really superior noise damping. 
As you can see, we've already installed our system inside R4. This is our high-end ATX system, and it deals with this form factor very well indeed. Now, for a mid-tower, it's quite spacious, especially at the top of the motherboard there. You can see numerous cable grommets, and this allows us to keep the system nice and tidy, makes a really easy job of it, and it makes the airflow have a nice, clean path. Now, the inside is powder-coated black, and various other elements are given the white, give that sort of distinct two-tone style. And it's a similar situation on the reverse, behind the motherboard tray. Here you can see we've got our cables arranged in a very nice and orderly fashion. We've got our cable tie there, and even the 24 pin fits behind here. And this is thanks to a very generous 2.3 centimetres of clearance from the back of the motherboard tray to the side panel. Now on some cases you'd be lucky to get one and a half centimetres, so you know, that is a really a goodly amount. Fractal Design have also implemented a nice little idea where you can drop in two two and a half inch SSDs on the back of this motherboard tray. Nice idea to put your storage there and keep it out of the way. We're now going to go into the case and take a look at the various features. Now to start with we'll take a look at the power supply unit. And uh, in this area we've got rubber underneath and this is something that I lo always look out for in my reviews. Uh, because it's an important thing, not just for the anti-vibration, but also, uh, you know, obviously the power supply is metal and the case is metal and we don't want any scratching, so good thing to see that. And uh, we've also got next to that, we've got the placement there for dropping in a 120 or a 140 millimeter fan for additional cooling. And both of these things are covered by an air filter, which you can take out and clean, and that's uh, removable from uh, the back of the case, you don't need to flip it on its side. Above this we have seven PCI expansion slot covers. These are all ventilated, coated in white and with thumb screws for easy removal. And then to the immediate left we have a vertically aligned PCI expansion slot cover. And this is just for a different type of device, perhaps something like a fan controller. And then above this we have a rear exhaust fan which is 140mm and again it's from the Silent Series R2. We have of course already covered the top so we can drop in the dual 120, dual 140mm fans or we can go for a 240mm radiator but it does need to be the thinner type. Over on to the optical drives we can drop in the two. We don't have any toolless design mechanisms there so it's just going to need a standard screw to drop those in. Finally then on to hard disk drive storage and you can see here we've got two cages and this gives us a maximum of eight drives. Now to remove the upper cage, all we need to do is remove this thumb screw. And this simply slides out like that. And you can also take this one out, but it does need to be removed via screws on the underside of the case. And once that's removed, we can actually drop in a 240mm radiator at the front. Now these cages contain uh, each a, a tray inside and you can see there this tray is metal and you can drop in two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive into there and all you need to do to to fix it in place is drop in your screws on the underside and that provides a nice stable platform for those drives. On to the topic of clearance Inside R4 we can actually drop in a Corsair H100, the mounting holes are there, it's just dependent upon your motherboard whether you've got the clearance there, so this isn't something I can actually comment on. But as far as air cooling is concerned, here we've got the Noctua NH-U12P, which is 158mm in height, and you can see that there is tons of space. Bigger flagships like your Noctua NH-D14, Thermalright Silver Arrow, Alpenfoam K2, which are all 160mm, they will fit in here no problem. With the upper hard disk drive cage being removable inside R4, we've got two different options for the graphics card. With it removed, we've obviously got extended compatibility. You, know, you can pretty much drop in anything that's currently on the market. But with it installed, we've got approximately 11 inches in length. You can see there we've got uh, the XFX 7970 Double D version. And this is approximately 10 and a half inches in length. And you can see there we've got a maximum of 11 inches for the clearance. And obviously for the PCI plugs, they're going to need to be uh, mounted as it is on this XFX card. If they're on the end, then, you know, for an 11 inch card, it's going to be uh, causing a problem. 
Alright guys, as a final clip I'm going to show you how loud the case fans are inside R4. Now we've got two 140mm fans, one has a rear exhaust and one has a front intake. I'm just going to take my mic off and get it as closer to the fans as possible. I'm going to run at 5 volts and then 12 volts. So I'll miss out 7 volts, um, just so you can see the difference between high and low. So we'll power the system up. Now this is currently at 5 volts. Now we're going to try 12 volts, just switch that up. So as you've probably gauged from that, there isn't a great deal of difference between 5 volts and 12 volts, it's very, very quiet indeed. Okay guys, well that pretty much concludes our video today. We've been taking a look at the new R4, hopefully that's given you a nice taster in what to expect from the features and the characteristics. Now, taking uh, you know the success of the R3 and uh, really trying to improve it and, and come with the next instalment is a difficult task and Fractal Designers to be commended for the, what they've done in this case. Because um, obviously, they change too much, then they can fall flat on the faces. Uh, but what they've done is that they've taken uh, you know, the same case and, and have just basically improved slight things and that they've tweaked it. And you know that, that's a, a good route to take. It's actually quite wise to do. So we've got the ability for the bigger graphics cards, as we said in the intro, uh, bigger CPU coolers. And then around the back of that motherboard, we've got uh, better cable management options. And then, you know, even for the hard disk drive storage, we can interchange that. Um, we can take those out and drop in water cooling at the front and the top. Um, so, you know, it's really quite flexible. One thing that I do like about the case is the side panels. So we've got the synthetic material there. And, um, it, you know, just the quality of the actual side panel, um, it, it's quite thick anyway, you know. Um, so it's good for noise damping. But then you've got the added material. You just can't hear anything at all. The design of the case, the quality is exceptional. Uh, it's hard to sort of get that across on the video, but uh, it is very good. So, you know, noise emitted from the case is going to be very minimal. These case fans don't actually uh, emit that much noise anyway. They're not going to be a problem. Uh, the only real thing is going to be the CPU cooler and the graphics card. That's, that's the only thing that could possibly create more noise, uh, depending on what you go for. So, very nice case. If you're going to be considering a silent case, uh, mid-tower, then definitely pop this on your shortlist. Um, pricing is approximately £90 in the UK at the moment, and then in the United States, you're looking at $110. US dollars. So it's quite competitive there. Now, if you want more detail, if you want to know what the thermal performance is like on this case, jump over to Vortez.net. There's a link in the description. And that just gives you uh, more of a, a, a conclusive uh, verdict, what I awarded it, the pros and cons, if there are any cons, you know, because it's actually very good. Uh, and, of course, the graphs of the film performance. So definitely drop over there if you want a bit more detail. Anyway, guys, uh, that's pretty much it from me. Um, if you can comment, rate and subscribe, I would appreciate that. And I shall see you soon.